All right, hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Education and Research Techniques. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at differentiation again. We're gonna be looking at the chain rule when you have more than three or more functions. So why don't we go ahead and see what we can do with this. So, all right, so when you, we've done the chain rule when you have uh, two functions. And so you know that you work from the inside on, on the way out, it's kind of like a chain. And so just to try to give you an example of what we're talking about, but we're gonna talk about this from a high level. Let's say we have a function k of x, like so, k of x equals h of f of g of x. That's what we have going on here. This is a, a parentheses, by the way. And so you can clearly see that we have three functions here. Now, personally, what I like to do is I like to work my way from the inside out. This is how, what makes it clear for me. And so if I had to try to address this, I want to try to deal with the most inner function first. So this guy first, I need to find the derivative of him. Again, this might not be the way you would do it or how other people would do it, but this is how I'm going to address that. So the derivative of this guy, so basically I'm looking for the derivative of k of, k of x, I would put g, g prime, excuse me, g prime of x. So that deals with him alone. Now I would go next to the most part right here, the next most inner function, if you will. And so now, as you know, it's going to be the derivative of f, and then the g of x is not is going to be unchanged. That's what we're doing here. And now finally, I would go out here and do the whole thing as such. And I would end up with something like, now I have the derivative of h of x, and that is going to be f of x unchanged, of course, and g of x unchanged. So you can see that's kind of how I would work this out. And you can clearly see the chain here. Now, uh, again, this was looking at it from an abstract level. We want to try to get an actual literal example so that we can better understand this. So in this particular example we're looking at, h of x, as you can see right here, equals sine to the sixth power, if you will, sine, sine of six, sine to the sixth, and then we have x to the third. Now this one's a little bit different because basically the sine of x is kind of like an x to the sixth, if you will, and then we have x to the third, and then we have sine out here by itself, something like that, not exactly, but um, it's a little bit different from what I just showed you, and so let me show you how to unpack this. Now, this time I'm gonna work from left to right because things get kind of weird here. So the first thing we wanna look at is just this sine of six. Sine, excuse me, just sine. And so it's sine x to the third, essentially. And so we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. And so we're just gonna leave the x to the third alone. Notice how I'm not dealing with the, the, to the raised to the sixth power yet. I'm gonna deal with that now when I do my next part. And so for the next part, I'm looking at this right here. And of course the x to the third as well. So um, I don't mess with the sine function. That stays the same and I use the power rule and I bring down the six. So the six comes down here and then it's still gonna be sine to the fifth power because this is the power rule. And then the x to the third, I don't touch it. And then lastly, to, to wrap this up and finish it, I deal with this part right here, the x to the third. And that is going to be, again, using power rule, 3x squared. Now, I can do some basic simplification here. So I can combine this sine, or excuse me, this six with this three right here. And so my final answer will be 18x squared times sine five to the x to the third times cosine. And inside that, we're gonna have x to the third. This is our final answer. And so you can see that, again, you, you had to do multiple steps here in order to unpack this <coughs> to make the chain function, or excuse me, the chain rule work out. And so, again, you can really make derivatives very complicated and challenging, but this is just to get us started. So let me kind of go back and review what we talked about and finish the video. So in this video, we looked at how to use the chain rule when you're dealing with, of course, more, three or more functions. 
And so the process is basically, you know, again, I recommend, this is my, my style, if you will, start with the most inner function if possible and find the derivative of that. Then take the next step and find the derivative of the next most inner function and leave the inner function alone. And then find the derivative of the, oh, the furthest most function and leave the two uh, functions inside alone. That's kind of how I did it here. And so in this example right here, it's kind of what I was talking about. We started with sine, that's kind of on the outside a little bit. And then we dealt with the, the power here, the, the exponent. And then lastly, we dealt with our little friend here, this guy out to the side and used the power rule again. And then we combined like terms and completed it. So I want to thank you for watching and listening. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.